I could really make that sewer a home. I think I got glitter in my eye. More customers than I ever have, but then this is what it turns into. Oh, hi. Welcome to Sewing Art Studios. I am Jo. And this week, we're doing my biggest event of the year, which is Granite Con, aka Granite State Comic Con, which happens every September in Manchester, New Hampshire. And this was actually my decade anniversary of doing it. I started in 2014 and it was like the first event I ever sold my stuff at, which feels very bold of me. <laughs> Thanks mid twenties me for, for doing that. Speaking of age, I just unpacked something that both makes me feel very geriatric, but also very happy and excited and just pumped about the freedom it's gonna give me, but I'll talk about that later. It is Monday, September 23rd, so I am back from Granite Con. It went okay. I did make less than I did last year, but not by a ton. Feel extra okay about it because it was across two days instead of three, and I will take a hundred dollar cut in pay <laughs> for having one less day of work to do. I'm actually feeling okay. I somehow had it in me to go to a concert after getting home from Granite Con yesterday and didn't get home till midnight. I was standing through three bands. I genuinely don't know. I mean, listen, I had to take a lot of ibuprofen on the ride home because I was in excruciating pain and I wasn't so much dancing as I was shifting my weight and I wish I had this thing with me for it, but one thing at a time. As for setup, day zero, whatever you want to call it. I, for GraniteCon, which was Friday the 20th, I actually ended up taking on a cat sitting job in addition to doing GraniteCon. It was in the same town as the event, so like it didn't seem like it was going to be that much out of my way, and it was kind of a last minute request from them, and uh, I just, I made it work. It's fine. One of the cats is really, really shy around a lot of people, so I feel like it's my duty as someone she's comfortable with to jump in when they need help just so like the cat's gonna be less anxious with me than maybe someone else to the point they've told me that like she's more comfortable with me than the male owner I take that responsibility seriously when you have been chosen I had a batch of dumpling pouches I was trying to get done because that's usually the thing I sell the most of that is not what happened this weekend I have my sale sheets from each day here, so we'll recap that in a bit. But I ended up sitting and hanging out with the cats, trying to edit the video that went up on Friday, which was another event recap. It was it was like a month long vlog because I had a bunch of medical stuff going on, which led to me making the purchase of the thing in the black bag. So yeah, I was hanging out with the cats for several hours editing that. And then while I was like watching the clips through and like, reviewing all of the footage. I was pinning all of the dumpling pouches into place so that it didn't make it a lot quicker and more even and clean of a sewing job once I got it home on the machine. I didn't get a ton made. I think I think I managed to do another like eight or nine dumpling pouches before bed Friday night and then I had prepped more, like I had more pinned that I was planning to sew Saturday night after the event to do a little bit of a restock, but I was too tired and just didn't have time. So not the end of the world because Saturday morning I checked on the cats before the event and then I checked on the cats again after the event. And then I did one last pop in Sunday morning. So my day was lengthened at the beginning and the end of the convention because of cat hangs. So like by the end of all of that, I was very sleepy. So let's jump back to Friday. And in addition to the new display stands I got, the spinny rack with all the hooks on it and the plant stand for the bigger bags, I also in that interim got, it's called like a floating backdrop display. It hooks onto the table and goes up and over instead of needing tripods behind you and taking up a bunch of foot space and everything. I have hated any time I've brought it with me. It's way more time consuming too and just like it takes up so much room and some events straight up don't let you bring tripods even the flat-footed tripods but especially not the the three-legged ones you know where sometimes there's like a like a t-shaped bottom bit that's like flat-footed and then it holds up 
the arch, but having it clamp onto the table, like, there's just no unknown variables. I'm in full control of what my stuff looks like, where I don't have to worry about what my neighbor behind me is doing for their backdrop and like if we're gonna have conflicting setups. I'm completely self-contained and initially I thought that the clamps were gonna have to go on the sides of the table, but not even, they can go on the back side. So if I'm like right against another table, I don't have to worry about that. It's definitely like a, a chaotic struggle to get it erected and then take it back down because it just doesn't really work for me at like partial height. I have to go whole hog for it to like have the effect I want it to have. And I have that nice galaxy fabric backdrop and I have my signage. It's awkward to put up on my own, but doable. I did a test run in my driveway in between my last event and Granite Con. And I'm so, so, so thankful I did. Like it took a couple hours to figure it out, but I wanted to do a dry run as far as testing it out to make sure I knew how to set it up and then like make sure it was gonna do what I wanted it to. But that's also the joy of having a day zero set up time at a multi-day event like the convention because you get the time to workshop and like troubleshoot those things. So I do appreciate that. Cause you're contending with so many other like highly professional setups for the most part. You want your stuff to look good and stand out. And I have never had such a big hit rate of people checking out my booth. Obviously it like it probably led to more sales than it would have without the eye catching stuff that I had. But also just the people that were like looking at my booth I I think was a much better ratio than usual where you know, maybe 30% of people would look at my booth, give it like a once over and then keep moseying. But I had so, so, so many people, genuinely like 90% of the people that walked by took time to like kind of assess everything and then continue on. And the number of people that like came back again and checked stuff out really made me very happy. Like people were excited about my stuff. And even if they didn't purchase something, just like very complimentary and just wanted to commend me on the stuff I had and uh yeah it, it's nice that I was able to draw people in so that the rest of the work I had like the inventory the actual handmade goods could be highlighted as as best as possible so that was really gratifying so thankful for that yeah putting the spinning rack on the tabletop I thought worked out really well and with the plant stand, especially putting my bat light up top, it took a little finagling to figure out the best way to like bolster it, but I had noodled with that on my dry run in the driveway. So I had like a pretty good idea for how I wanted it to work. And then, yeah, I had like set up a screen with my grid cubes with the flat black panels, like built a little checkout stand in the middle, just had like a blank wall behind other stuff. but. I had considered hanging some clothes from like a grid wall that would have been behind each stand, but the whole point of having the backdrop like that was to not have as much like visual clutter and noise. And I think having that kind of item behind the racks I had was gonna distract from everything else and like make it look too, too much. So I decided against it. I ended up being able to display clothes on the second day but we'll get there when we get there. I noodled around with like where I was putting signage and stuff, put stuff up, took stuff down. You know, it's okay to let your stuff evolve even throughout the event as it goes and see like, this isn't quite working for me. I want to switch stuff out. This is what my setup looked like the night before. Then once I actually put the inventory out and, and re noodled with the signage and everything and turned my bat light on, this is what it ended up looking like once everything was ready to go. I had debated putting up the jewelry stand and, and my like acrylic rack and, and going that route. And I'm really glad I did because it drew a lot of people in. I didn't sell much in the way of jewelry. I think I sold like two things that weren't like mystery items, but the spinning stand that I got for the jewelry like drew people in and then they checked out other stuff and like I made some mini bag sales because that stuff was right next to the jewelry and everything plays a part in like catching people's attention. So literally having moving parts, I, I 
think helped. And then actually, I believe I took a clip after the event Saturday. So let's jump over to that. I hurt my arm. It's about to be on screen. It is now on screen. It is now off of screen. <laughs> I'm putting a Band-Aid on it. But I knocked into a brick wall in my own house <laughs> the other day. It's been there the whole time I've lived there. And for some reason, I scraped my elbow across it. Then someone was holding the door for me, but it still closed on me. Uh, so they weren't doing a great job. Medical inconveniences aside, day one is done. I didn't film this morning other than I showed the table once I had everything set up because I showed like the display bits last night. But I didn't show you once I had the stuff on it. I made a couple tweaks throughout the day. So let's do a day one of two square report check. Let's see. Did 374 in sales, which is more than the table fee. It was like a, a little over 300 for the table, which is too much. And the event started at 10 a.m. So here's the chart as far as like the hours that were busiest. I almost never sell stuff in the first hour. So I've just kind of become accustomed to that but I did today and I felt really good and I sold three slings I sold a crossbody bag I sold three mystery totes which is amazing and a mystery scarf and a bunch of mini bags I have like a mix and match note on here if they were switching between types of mini bags I have I think my last check-in with the cats I'm taking care of because they asked for a Friday a.m. Friday p.m. Saturday a.m. Saturday p.m. check-in for the kitties but they said they're not getting back till five o'clock tomorrow night so I assume they need food in the morning so I'm gonna I'm gonna double check just in case because I don't want the kitties to like be abandoned but I don't know if like they don't want to pay me for a third day of pet sitting or or what have you but yeah um, oh, those were only the top items. Wait. Oh, right. I also sold some uh, mystery earrings as well. It's so funny. I hardly sold any all day. And then there was this mad rush where I sold like 10 of them right at the end. Within like 10 minutes, I think I sold 10 of them or nine of them. Absolutely bonkers. Uh, it's so funny how people just like do things in waves. Same thing with the slings. I sold all three within the first like 90 minutes of the event. Uh, I feel a little dehydrated, but nothing extreme. And I ate a nice big breakfast sandwich when I got there. And then I had made sandwiches for me and my best friend who was hanging out with me. I paid her in bags and food because she's the bestest. Um, and it was a lot of fun. But yeah, I had, actually, I wasn't super snacky. I'm currently hungry, but not like scary. I'm going to be sick hungry. So um, yeah. All right, off to check on kitties. I think I'm gonna sit and play Animal Crossing with them for a bit so that like I'm there to hang out for a little while and then they get some company um, and then I can just relax for a little bit. I didn't sleep for shit last night. Uh, I should have taken my anxiety meds cause it helps when I'm having like a panic attack but it also helps with like the thought spirals. Also, I think I got glitter in my eye. I thought it was an eyelash, but I, I definitely think I have a bit of glitter in there. Uh, I did cut my hair this morning. That's part of why I was running late. But I realized it, it had been a couple of days since I had taken a shower. Uh, it just sneaks up on me sometimes. If I, if I don't do something that causes me to be just like a sweaty mess monster person, because like I take a shower if I get really gross and sweaty. So during the summer, I shower like twice a day sometimes just because I, I feel disgusting, but it's been cooler and I've just been in goblin mode in my sewing room. So it like, I don't do it on purpose, but it happens. I was like, I'm going to be around a lot of people tomorrow. I just want to feel clean. I didn't get gross and sweaty today. So that's nice. But yeah, I, I trimmed my hair down. I used a number two guard. This is like my ideal length but I think I'll have to cut it like weekly if I do this. So that's why I go a little shorter so I can go longer between. But I feel really good about my haircut and I don't have to like plan 
oh, I want my hair to look extra good next week, so I need to cut it now. I don't need to like do hair math. It's fine. I just, I really di didn't like how it was looking yesterday. That's a really annoying length for me because I, I have such thin, fine hair and I don't have a lot of it. So it's um, one of my biggest like physical appearance frustrations, but that's why I shave the sides. It is what it is. There's an easy resolution. Okay, uh, and thankfully like a short haircut suits my head shape, I have been told. So it could be, it could be worse. All right, I'm gonna go for real now, but um, made table back first day. That almost never happens at GraniteCon, but it's also only Saturday, Sunday this year where they've done Friday, Saturday, Sunday a number of times. And I have hated every second of them doing that. That's not true. I don't think that's the smartest move. It's not a big enough convention to warrant that. But uh, the other thing I was gonna say as far as tomorrow, before I let you go, my table neighbor to one side packed up, like hard packed up, and I was asking how his day was going. And he was like, you know what? Actually, it didn't go, it didn't go too bad. And then he was like pulling his tablecloth off. I was like, are you gonna be here tomorrow? Just like trying to keep it as casual as possible. It's like, nah, family thing came up. Um, so there's gonna be a blank space next to me. And there was one across the aisle from me that I didn't even notice. So like it couldn't have been that much of an eyesore, but it sucks when there's an empty table in your section. So I'm just gonna show up tomorrow with my garment rack. And if someone has a problem with it, they can talk to me. Because listen, if I were a straight white guy, I would just take up the space and not ask for permission for it. I just do it. Cause I see them do it all the time. Like part of me is wondering if the neighbor I have on the other side is gonna wanna take over that table. Yeah, I think if I just get here early enough, I can just throw my garment rack up and call it a day. I should email the owners or the people that are coordinating it just to ask like, hey, is this all right? I think they'll probably encourage it cause a garment rack is gonna look better than an empty table. All right, off for kitty hangs and some Animal Crossing. I will check in tomorrow, hopefully beforehand, but I will at least show you the tweaks I'm gonna make to the setup. Nothing extreme, but I'm honestly blanking on what those would be anyways. We'll see what happens, wish me luck. Okay, so Sunday, I partied with the cats again in the morning and then went right over. And then I didn't change a ton of stuff, but I did break down the cage just because I realized there was no reason for it having the like walls on either side of the checkout and it was making it hard for me to reach from my seat like from the center and just like add things because especially the spinning rack once I took the cage down it was so easy like I could literally stay sitting and the the only reason I was able to sit and actually the only reason I survived the weekend is because my best friend had bought me that extra tall, like director's chair height camp chair. Absolute game changer. I'm gonna have a much easier time this season and I have had a much easier time having a chair that like doesn't have me hiding behind the table. I'm like up at eyeball height, like I'm tall. So I think I have that advantage anyway, but like it, it's the perfect height for this setup. I, I'm just so appreciative, so. I was able to literally just sit and then like, if someone bought a bag, I was able to just like pull from my pack out tower to my left, reach out the drawers, grab a replacement and then just spin the rack till there was the empty slot and then just replace it. And it just made the functionality of the whole day. Oh, it just was so helpful and efficient. And, and it was a very like work smarter, not harder type of evolution that's happened. And then as for the end of the day, I do what I call like a, a quiet breakdown, like a sneaky breakdown of my setup where, like I said, I didn't sell much in the way of jewelry. So I left everything else up, but I like, I took my spinny jewelry rack down first and then just started putting that stuff away like half an hour, 45 minutes before the event ended. Cause I don't like breaking down early in general but doing like 
the phrase quiet quitting keeps coming up in my head. That's not quite what was happening. Taking the least noticeable things down first, and then I'll take the signs down but leave the inventory out, and then I took like the screen down and the backdrop down before I took the racks down with all the stuff on it, just so it was still shoppable for people if they wanted to check stuff out. So that's why there wasn't like footage before the end, because people still came and purchased things while I was breaking down, so there wasn't going to be like a, this is the final look of the booth before the end of the weekend happened. And I'm normally manning my booth solo, but this specific event, my best friend is very generous with her time and, and comes to hang out. We're like, I basically just need someone to watch my table so I can go run to the bathroom really quick, but it is helpful having someone that like knows my stuff, knows me, and like is really good with people as far as like customer service stuff. And she's a really great hype man um, and is also very tolerant of people. Anyway, I just, I really appreciated her. The other update that happened Sunday, right, I knew I'd get back to it. My table neighbor to m my right, if you're facing my booth, ended up leaving at the end of the day Saturday. You know, most people, me included, do like a partial breakdown where I leave my display stuff up, but I take all my inventory because like, I'd be devastated if I lost any of that or it got stolen or whatever, or damaged in some way. So, though, y'all will be proud of me because I did buy an insurance policy for like the year and it helps cover like inventory and tools and stuff and not just day of things. Anyway, the guy to my right, <laughs> when he was breaking down at the end of the day Saturday, he was like taking his stands down and taking his tablecloth down. I was like, most people leave at least the tablecloth up in their signage. Like, I didn't want to be nosy, but also, like, it is relevant to me and everybody else in my aisle if my neighbor's just not going to be there the next day. Because few things negatively impact a row at an artist alley than empty blank tables. So it kind of fucks everybody. So I emailed them asking, like, hey, he's not going to be there. Is it okay if I bring my garment rack to fill the space in the morning? I got a response from the coordinator, like the main guy, saying, hey, the college that's like sponsoring a bunch of this, they're going to take over a couple of the tables, but if they haven't taken over the one next to you by 9.15 or whatever, VIP doors opened at 9.30, event fully started at 10. He was like, go for it, totally fine. So really appreciated that. And like, he didn't try charging me for a second spot. None of that fuckery. It was fine. So I just double checked with that guy's other neighbor on the other side. So like two spots to the right of me. I think it was a guy named Kenny, super nice. And I was like, hey, I'm happy to like split the section. He was like, I don't have anything to put there. I was like, okay, cool. I have a garment rack. If you're okay with it, I'll pull it in, break the table down, put, you know, a couple garments on it. I did end up selling a cardigan. It was my galaxy cardigan and like other people, you know, thumbed through the rack and uh, there's not a lot of apparel being sold at events like that. So it's one more thing to get people to like slow down in our section and like just check it out. So I was literally like, I don't even care if I sell a single item. It's just going to work better for everybody in my section if there's something like this here instead of the empty table. I cannot express to you enough how much it sucks. I get things occur. But like the coordinators weren't going to do anything about it. So just took matters into my own hands. I almost didn't ask permission. I almost went rogue and just did it, but I didn't want to like mess up my neighbor or like if they were going to have somebody else that paid for that spot come in Sunday morning. So I just, I didn't want to step on anybody's toes, but was also like, Hey, I would like to take up space. Yeah. I was able to have my garment rack there and that worked out really well. And I'm very appreciative of, uh, just nice folks in my section. So, speaking of, the table neighbor to my left, looking at my booth, snickerdoodle cat art, could not have been a nicer person. Hi, if you're watching this. Uh, genuinely, a goddamn delight. Good table neighbors make all the difference. And I'm still so thankful 
for like my first convention in 2014, I was next to two guys that do the Underburbs comic books. Super nice dudes, really supportive. Like it was my first time. I think they could tell. Um, I didn't have the most exciting layout. Like this is what my table looked like in 2014. We didn't actually like introduce ourselves with our names talking to each other, but I believe her name is Kate. She actually said she had watched some of my videos in the lead up to it. And like I had messaged her on Instagram the night before, uh, so day zero, after I had gotten a setup and everything, I was going through like the Granite Con tags and just like trying to see if there were updates or just like cool things happening, see what other artists were doing, who else was there. And I looked at the vendor list and like saw who my neighbors were and I didn't recognize either business name. So I was doing some snooping just, just to see. And she had posted a Instagram story talking about like being in con crunch mode. And I just messaged her like, hey, I think we're table neighbors. I just want to say hi and like cheer you on because like I have been in, in that space you're in so many times. So you've got this and like see you this weekend. Where I initially wasn't going to message her, but then I got in my head and I told her this too. I got in my head and was like, but what if she sees that I watched her story and then didn't say anything? And like, is she going to think, I don't want to talk to her or any of that stuff. I got like weirdly in my head about it. I was like, I'm just going to shoot her a message. It can't hurt. So yeah, she told me the next morning, um, she'd thank me for the message and then told me, she's like, I don't know if this is weird, but I was actually watching some of your videos and listen, the reason I started posting the like studio vlog style things, event prep videos, whatever you want to call them is cause that's all I watch all day when I'm in here sewing stuff, unless I have to like do math. Or like think like if I'm editing videos obviously I'm not watching videos but my like sewing time signage prepping time whatever else I have studio vlogs on in the background from other artists it made me really happy to hear someone else watches my stuff in the same way I watch other artists stuff and like they said it was helpful watching mine and other people's videos as far as like learning hey you gotta add height to your display that's like the number one thing I would recommend to people is like add as much visual interest as possible without like detracting from your items and her display looked incredible like that did not look like a first year artist setup that was some like pro level shit so so cool so nice I will put her handle here and then link her in the description as well so go check her out super nice and the coolest part of all of this I wanted to cry. Um, at the end of the day, Saturday, she came up to me as we were like both about to head out for the night. It was like, Hey, uh, weird question, but did you make this? And she held up one of my very first sling bags that I made. Genuinely one of my favorite ones. It had my favorite faux leather I've ever used. Cause it was like so soft and buttery and just like a really cool toned green. I really liked the look of it. And it was this really vibrant mushroom fabric that I haven't been able to find since. I think I found like a slightly different colorway, but I don't know like how to look it up. Cause like bright mushroom fabric is a difficult search term to use online. And I didn't take like proper product photos of it either. I remember selling that one. I remember where I was and I didn't recognize her. I'm so much worse with faces than I used to be. I used to be so good. I had like a very strong Rolodex of people's names and faces in my brain. And I just, I can't retain that information anymore. But I remembered an interaction selling that and her being really excited about it. So she was literally using that as her like everyday bag this whole time. Like she, she didn't know I was the one that sold it because I wasn't putting my brand tags in things at the time. So it's not like she necessarily would have remembered it was Sewing Nerd Studios. And I rebranded since then, like my logo has changed and everything. The fact I was next to somebody that had bought something from me a year ago and, and is still using it, like I could not have asked for a cooler thing to have happened. So. That was really awesome. That was, that was really cool. And that's part of why I didn't film. A, cause I think I was embarrassed. I'm typically embarrassed to film when there are people around, but especially if someone knows I'm filming for a video, even if I know that you know that I know you're watching it. Um, 
I don't, I, it definitely like stops me from doing it. Where I filmed my setup and was like unembarrassed about that, but as far as like talking throughout the event, I, I felt like I was not just her either, but like I, I feel like the people across from me, they had kept coming over to check out some stuff. There was a bag one of the vendors really wanted. Like I just felt like I was being perceived a lot more because I was literally being perceived by like more customers than I ever have. So I was just trying to like lay low, basically. I just, I had to share that really cool thing. I also had a wild interaction happen. Uh, my initial thought when these people asked about my name was like, am I about to be arrested by teenagers? Because I was sitting at my booth. There was like a quieter chunk of time in the middle of the day, Saturday. And this like taller boy like probably 20 ish and then other like older teenagers were standing by him and he was pointing at my sign and saying I think this is it this has to be it right and looked at the girls he was standing next to and they were like yeah that that's it and then he goes are you and he said my full name which I don't go by at all I was like yes and that's why it went through my head like am am I in trouble? Like, what's happening? And, uh, turns out it was one of my cousin's kids. And if you don't know, I have more first cousins than they do in my big fat Greek wedding. I have a very large family. So this cousin is so much older than me. She was the first born cousin on my mom's side. So we didn't really grow up together because she's like 15, 20 years older, something like that. And we've hung out since I've become an adult, uh, but we're not super close. Like, she's very sweet. Hi, Anna, if you're watching this. But she has three kids that are, like, high school graduates and into college and stuff. I've, I've never met them before. They couldn't have been nicer. They were so sweet. One of them had a battle jacket on, which, if you don't know, it's just a term for, like, a denim jacket with a bunch of patches and pins and stuff on it. I guess it started because like World War II pilots would put extra patches and stuff at, and identifiers on on their jackets so they got picked up by like the punk scene and everything. Because I know it's very much a thing to like go to a military surplus store to like get your your bags and your jackets and your boots and stuff. Hopefully and not totally inaccurate summary of the backstory of it. But so she had it on and there was like a Mothman pin, like a giant Mothman pin. So I had these little Mothman keychains. It was the last thing I had ever ordered from Sticker Mule, who I'm not supporting anymore. And I'm, I was just kind of trying to get rid of them. So I had them in like a little discount bin that was like, you know, $6 each or two for 10. But she had Mothman on her. I was like, I'm, de I'm definitely just gonna give her, give her this. So I handed her a keychain and was like, if you'd like this, here you go. And she was so excited. She's like, you know, it's funny. He's not even my favorite cryptid. And then I showed her my, my jackalope tattoo. Cause hi, I have a jackalope tattoo. These are my favorite cryptids. And I asked like, oh, what's your favorite one? And she said the Fresno Nightcrawler, which like, unless you're from California, I don't hear people talk about that one but I do have Fresno Nightcrawler printed stuff. And I had one card wallet left that had the Fresno Nightcrawler stamped on it from when I did a lino block print line of cryptids. And I handed it to her. It was like, you know, I don't mean to like throw things at you, but if you want this, like I am happy to give this to you because nobody knows who this is. And I'm just happy he can find a new home. Like I stopped putting him out on my display because like, no one paid him any attention. Yeah, they were just really sweet kids. So I got to give them things and like, that. that's also nice. I like being able to make stuff for people. And even though I didn't make it with them in mind, like she clearly appreciated it right out the gate and was gonna be really pumped about it. So it just, yeah, it made me really happy. And I also did hand out another keychain. I still had my old logo. I had keychains made years ago that had like the beer mug and the spool of thread and with the white background. Cause like I redid the colors last year, this, this logo here 
one day I'll learn how to use a viewfinder. <sighs> this logo here. I had one keychain left and I have been giving those out if somebody that watches my videos comes up to me at a market in person because it's such a small number of people that hang out here. Hi, thank you so much for being here. <laughs> I know there's not a lot of you, but like those of you that are here care really hard and have been here for quite a while for the most part. And if you're newer, I don't think less of you. Thank you for being here too. But like, I so appreciate the community we have here. So finding someone out in the wild that has like seen my stuff is not a common occurrence. I think there's been like three times people have been like, oh, hey, I watch your videos. And someone, it was a mom with her young kid and they came up to my booth and they saw me and they were like, hey, wait a second, you helped me put a new zipper in my jacket. I was like, did I? Thinking like, did she come to alterations night and I fixed it for her? She's like, oh no, I like I watched one of your videos and you walked me through doing it and I was able to do it because of the thing you posted. So that also meant a lot. So I gave her that keychain that I had and that was also very cool. So uh, the initial batch of those keychains I actually got made to start with as gifts for Patreon folks, specifically like Mailtime Perk patrons. And while we're here, I wouldn't be able to take the time to like invest in new setups and get stuff like that made. If not for everybody over on Patreon, I was able to like invest in the booth fee for this event, which it is a lot. It's gone up a lot the past couple years and I don't know that it's a big enough convention to really warrant that price, but it was better foot traffic than, than previous years. Again, I made less than last year, but it was also in the course of two days. And like for single day sales, I, I sold more than I do at like typical events. So like, is it worth the money? I don't know, but I'm able to do that because of all of the support I have on Patreon. Like y'all are my most consistent income stream. And um, I cannot express to you how appreciative I am of that. It, it makes so many other unknown variables less stressful because I, I have this little scaffolding that is made up of all of you. So thank you for being here. Okay, as for items sold rundown, I think I went through each category in that car clip from Saturday. Then my biggest seller, other than mystery items, of the whole weekend is I sold 10 keychain bags on Sunday. Only two dumpling pouches, one card wallet, two dog bags. I sold the Galaxy cardigan. I sold a Krobus necklace, Krobus from uh, Stardew Valley, my little sewer. It can't be my boyfriend because you can't actually have a relationship with him like you can with other characters, but I could really make that sewer a home if they just let me marry him. Anyways, <laughs> I sold one sling bag and one mystery tote and six mystery jewelry things, where most of them were earrings, one was a necklace. So, thank goodness for the mini bags, y'all. They're fun to make, and there's a big enough variety of styles that, like, I don't get burnt out doing batches of stuff, because I can make, like, 60 keychain bags, and then if I don't want to make those anymore, I can make a bunch of dumpling pouches, and then, like, I'm kind of itching to get back to the card wallet batch I have, like, prepped and ready to go. So that, that's really nice. It keeps it interesting for me. And then I can work on specialty items because I am down to three or four sling bags in my total inventory. And that's amazing. I, I have been waiting for an excuse to make more. So now I have that. I think that was everything I wanted to cover other than, yeah, after the event Sunday, I went to go see Samosa was the opener that I was unfamiliar with, Spanish Love Songs who's a band me and my partner tried to go see earlier in the year, but neither of us were like feeling great the day of. I genuinely don't know how I felt so good yesterday. Like I knew we were going to the concert. I also know my partner would have like stayed home with me if I hadn't been feeling up for it, but I tried extra hard to take care of myself really well throughout the weekend and not overexert myself so that I had it in me to do the show. And, and not make him 
bail on something he wanted to go do. And I also got to enjoy it. Like, that's the big part. Like, concerts were a pillar of my existence for a number of years. And, you know, for a while there, I didn't know I'd ever get to go to another one. So getting that back in the rotation every once in a while, like, I don't want to miss out on that stuff. So I was feeling well enough. We went. My blood pressure, stomach issues, surprisingly completely fine. I'm genuinely, like, excited about how good I felt. Pain levels, however, normally I have, like, you know, my shoulder always bothers me to some degree. There's not a day that goes by my shoulder doesn't hurt. But all the other parts that hurt, like my hips and my lower back and my knees and my ankles and my wrists and my elbows, the rest of me, it usually takes turns hurting, but all systems were on fire last night. Like it took everything in me to not like curl up in a ball on the floor. It was very, 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 very painful. But I stuck it out. I didn't want to make him bail early. And, like, I wanted to watch the whole show. So, like, you do what you got to do. Had I been able to sit, I think that would have helped. But frustratingly, a lot of venues don't have any seating area. Unless it's a fully seated concert. And then usually those are more expensive. It's a whole thing. Where, like, so many of the shows I go to are general admission. Which brings me to this thing I bought. That I'm going to use at events as well and just like in my life in general, I had been looking for some type of pop-up seat I could bring. That's not like a camp chair, because you can't carry a camp chair a lot of places. And I, I don't need a cane for like general walking, but I was thinking of the canes that have a little fold-out seat. I was like, something like that, like it was super portable, would be amazing. And I found this thing it's called a flip stick. I don't know if anybody else is familiar with it. Let me know. Uh, it comes in a little carrying bag. It's like super discreet. I could just use this as a purse. Like I might add a pocket to it to hold my phone and my wallet, or I'm just going to make myself a upgraded version of this shape, like take a pattern off it. And then this, and it's like surprisingly lightweight. This is how it comes out of the bag. It does that. Then you push a little button here. Cause like you can use this as a walking stick, right? Then you push a little button here. So like if you need to lean on it or whatever, or just a little extra support while you're walking. But then this is what it turns into. Oh, very cool. It has, oh, that's amazing. I didn't realize there's an adjustable height thing down here. I'll test that out, but let me show you the magic. You basically become your own human tripod. This is surprisingly stable. I, I cannot tell you how helpful <laughs> this is going to be in my life. And it's like discreet, you know, is I can imagine had I done this at the show last night, I would have been less noticeable than all of the like stretching and like bending I was doing. And um, yeah, I do want to raise it up a little bit and see. Let's try like the tallest setting. That's Honestly, I don't hate this at all. Because I like I'm barely I'm barely squatting down. This is incredible. See, and then if I'm like next to some kind of high top standing shelf, standing at a bar, whatever, like I don't look like I'm sitting down. I just look like I'm honestly having better posture than when I'm just normally existing out in the world. This is really cool. I was not expecting to have this reaction. This feels like freedom. Um, 
there's a lot of stuff that I get really anxious about doing or I'm afraid to do because I have symptoms that will occur that like are debilitating and I can't tell you the number of times I've gone to a show or like this fun event and I've just had to like camp out in the bathroom the whole time. Something like this is going to help me get to enjoy stuff so much more. And like, I'm a lot less nervous. Didn't think I was going to start crying over a stick, but here we are. Um, I'm really glad I did this for myself. It was about a hundred dollars and initially I was like, that's too much for me to spend on myself. If that's the reaction I'm having to like testing it out, I think it's worth every penny. Man, this is really cool. I'm thankful that this exists. Like, I'm not sponsored. I don't know anything about the company. It just seemed like it was going to fix a need that I have. And then, yeah, I just have this. And then it just looks like a pizza slice shaped purse, which naturally now that's what I want to make a bag look like. Um, Okay, <laughs> that got more intense than I <laughs> anticipated. On that note, I am going to wrap things up. I have not had enough water today. Make sure you're hydrating, taking care of yourself, resting when you need to. I still have a rush order I need to do that I've not had in my head at all today. But I slept in this morning. I'm very proud of myself. I do not usually get myself to do that. It's really hard for me to sleep in, but I slept till like 10 today, but I obviously needed it. And like usually the Monday after Granite Con every year, I used to try to like schedule stuff. And it's only cause like there's a rush element to the thing I need to get done today. That like normally I wouldn't have any time sensitive work planned for today, but things pop up, you know, Ugh, I don't even know where I was just going with that. So I'm gonna go. <laughs> I will see you back here with a new video in two Fridays. Thank you so much for hanging out. You can probably hear I'm a little horse. I'm a little horse. Yeah.